Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Glenn Thomas here. One fourth of the wrestling marks of excellence here. You wish you can find each and every Thursday night on Fox Sports Radio, 1340 AM and 96.9 FM. As we do in each and every week, we re- have our reactions to Monday Night Raw. I'll give you a little bit of results and reactions to Monday Night Raw. Hey, but if you want to he- hear our reaction each and every week, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification uh, so you never miss any of our shows. Go ahead and subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, wherever you get your social media so you can catch our podcast uh, each and every week. But let's go on to Monday Night Raw. Uh, Monday Night Raw, we saw Monday Night Raw coming from the American Airlines Arena in Dallas, Texas. Of course, we opened the show up as you thought it would open up after the debacle called the Hell in a Cell. Whether you, some of you didn't like the ending, some of you liked the ending, but well, nonetheless, Hell in a Cell ended and we didn't have, we had a, still had a Universal Champion, which is Roman Reigns. Braun Strowman tried to cash in but didn't cash in his briefcase. Uh, well, he cashed in his briefcase, but he lost. So he joins the likes of uh, John Cena, for not winning, the likes of Damian Sandow not winning, and we could add Braun Strowman to that list of people who cashed in their briefcase and did not win. So we do that. Baron Corbin announces that there will be a match. Of course, we got Paul Heyman comes down and shares his input about the Brock, the Beast, Le- the Brock Lesnar, the Beast incarnate can do what he wants, and that he deserves a Universal Title rematch or match. Uh, then we go on and move on. This is where a match is made between. Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns, and Brock Lesnar. And it's not for what you think. It is not for the show, Super Show Down Under, but it is for the Crown Jewel pay-per-view, the universe of the first match for the Crown Jewel pay-per-view. This pay-per-view will be in Saudi Arabia, uh, Friday, November the 2nd. You can find it on the WWE Network. You can order it uh, traditionally through pay-per-view, but it will be on the WWE Network. The WWE turns returns to Saudi Arabia on November the 2nd, Friday, November the 2nd, for the Crown Jewel pay-per-view. And the main event of the match, or the main event of the evening, will be Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar in a triple threat match, which was made, which is announced by the interim general manager, Baron Corbett. But we go on and move on to the first month match of the night where we saw Dean Ambrose taking on Drew McIntyre. Uh, as I said and I mentioned you each and every week if you listen to our podcast, Drew McIntyre is a stud. Drew McIntyre is a future universal champion. Uh, Drew McIntyre, since he came back in the WWE, has come back with so much intensity and brute force that is you can't but notice that this guy is going to be a champion. I would love to have seen how, what kind of NXT run he would have been, uh, a long run he would have had as NXT champion. Uh, unfortunately, he got hurt. But it's good to see him back here on WWE, and he got the win over Dean Ambrose. Big win to, big win for Drew McIntyre over Dean Ambrose on Monday Night Raw. And then we, then we went on to the Dead Man, uh, the Undertaker. Twenty-eight years in the WWE, the Undertaker makes his appearance back to Monday Night Raw to talk about the Super Show Down uh, in Australia. Uh, we, he made a big major announcement that the Kane, that Kane, the Mayor. Kane from Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, will be in his corner at Super Showdown. Uh, you, so now you have Shawn Michaels in the corner of Triple H, Kane in the tr- uh, corner of The Undertaker, and we'll see these four Hall of Famers because I know Kane and The Undertaker's not in there yet, neither is Triple H, but they are sure fire Hall of Famers whenever they decide to retire. The WWE put them inside, so we see in the Hall of Fame, we'll see these Hall of Famers at the Super, so- Super Showdown in Australia, uh, it's going to be it's building up to be a great show. Uh, good to see these guys putting in work. I personally, and this is for another show, uh, don't want to see Shawn Michaels ever wrestle again. But it looks like the WWE is going that way. Rumors is that the Crown Jewel pay per view will see Undertaker versus Undertaker and Kane versus DX, Shawn Michaels and Triple H. Hey, say it's not show. So, say it's not so, Shawn. Say it's not so. Uh, we're going on to Becky. Bailey, excuse me, Bailey taking on Dana Brooke. We know T- Dana Brooke is separated from Titus World. Titus Worldwide. She's separated from Titus Worldwide, uh, and she's looking to do things on her own. Uh, but nonetheless, she didn't do it tonight because Bailey picked up the win over Dana Brooke. Dana Brooke has to go back to the drawing board and see what she can do in the women's division. I'd love to see how WWE will continue to keep Bailey and Sasha Banks relevant. In his women's division, will there be women tag team titles? Will they branch off and eventually face Ronda Rousey, one of these two? Uh, only time would tell, but it's time for Ronda to have some new dance partners. Then we move on to the Authors of Pain now. Hey, this is where I, I have an issue. I saw the Authors of Pain. They are trying to build this team up as a dominant team. But each and every week, they face jobbers. Now, I understand you got to build the team up slowly but surely. But when they came off of NXT, they was fighting jobbers. Uh, then they went to Titus Worldwide. 
and then they now they're back to jobbers. Now, WWE doesn't have that many tag teams for the AOP to beat up on Monday Night Raw. Uh, you have the Revival, which will be a decent match. Uh, you have Team, uh, the B Team, which is a former tag team champions. Probably won't see that. Then you have Drew McIntyre in... Dolph Ziggler, tag team champions. May not see that right now as of yet, neither. But eventually, the AOP has to be, stop beating up jobbers each and every week and begin to face real competition. WWE, or bring some more tag teams up. We know the fashion police is uh, hurt. Uh, Bray Wyatt and Jeff Hardy is non-existent. So AOP needs some competition, WWE. Jobbers every week. Mm, it's getting old. Uh, then we move on to Seth Rollins, who defeated... Dolph Ziggler, Dolph Ziggler uh, invoked his uh, rematch clause with Intercontinental Championship. Very good match here. Anytime these two guys get into the ring together, it is a very good match. You have two of the best workers in the company, which is Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler, put on a top quality match here on Monday Night Raw. If you watch Monday Night Football, you probably switched over to this match to check it out. But nonetheless, Seth Rollins is still your Intercontinental Champion by defeating Dolph Ziggler. Uh, then we moved on to Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey had her open challenge. She was calling anybody, any woman out in the back, saying that she is going to be a fighting champion. Now, if you watch long wrestling as long as I did, you knew something was up here. Whether she was going to get a jobber or she was going to get somebody else, you time only time would tell. But nonetheless, we were surprised. But who came out? Natalia music hit, and you're like, oh nah, we're not going to get this today, are we? Nah, you're right. We didn't get it because the Riot Squad had broke that bad boy up real quick. The Riot Squad uh, came out and beat down Natalia before she even could get to the ring. And the Riot Squad began to take out Ronda Rousey. Uh, so, you know, so we're, it's shaping up for the Super Showdown. Monday Night Raw, everything's shaping up for the Super Showdown uh, where you see the Riot Squad who take on Ronda Rousey and the Bella Twins. Uh, so it's moving into that direction. But it's good to see Ronda Rousey on Monday Night Raw each and every week. It's good to see her talking about how she wants to be a fighting champion. And if you watch her match from Hell in a Cell, you can see the progression of Ronda Rousey. Go back to WrestleMania. Go back to uh, Money in the Bank. Uh, go back to all the matches that Ronda Rousey has had in the last year, and you can see the progression of Ronda Rousey and how she's developing. She's developing well. They say she's catching on real quickly. That competitiveness that she has is making her to be a good wrestler and not only a good wrestler but a great wrestler and she could become one of the first few wrestlers to ever be in the UFC Hall of Fame and WWE Hall of Fame I know somebody said stop hold your brakes you're talking about it a little too early if she sticks with it she will be a good one then we saw Bobby Lashley who has a new manager that's right Leo Rush the talking man himself the man of the hour Leo Rush uh, is Bobby Lashley's new manager. This is a good move here to put Bobby Lashley with a talker. Uh, we know Bobby Lashley is not that much of a um, promo type guy. So Leo Rush would do all the talking for Bobby Lashley. But we saw Bobby Lashley had a match with Elias later on in the night, which didn't get really completed because Kevin Owens came out because we know Kevin Owens has an issue with Bobby Lashley for putting his good friend Sami Zayn on the shelf. He attacks Leo Rush. Leo Rush makes his ring, makes his way to the ring behind, behind Big Brother, uh, as he makes Elias in Sami Zayn, Sa Elias in Kevin Owens look bad. Nonetheless, Bobby Lashley and Leo Rush gets the last laugh over Kevin Owens and Elias. Good, good pairing between these two. Leo Rush makes it to the WWE roster before the Velveteen Dream, baby. The Velveteen Dream. But it's good. Shout out to Leo Rush. Good for him to get to the WWE main roster. Uh, then we move on to Emma Moon taking on Alicia Fox and Mickey James. But she had a surprise partner. No one knew who a surprise partner was. But it was the returning Nia Jax. Nia Jax returned to Monday Night Raw uh, this past Monday night. I know a lot of you wrestling fans are happy to see Nia back on Monday Night Raw. She's been off TV for a while, uh, doing a lot of things in mainstream media and in pop culture. But nonetheless, Nia Jax is back. And her and Emma Moon pick up the win over Alicia Fox and Mickey James. Good to see Nia back home where she belongs, uh, which is the WWE ring. Uh, then we moved on to the main event of the night where we saw Roman Reigns taking on Baron Corbin. Of course, this match, a very decent match for Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin, uh, being the general manager of Raw, has put himself into the universal title picture. Pick got disqualified earlier in the match, uh, but as he did a couple weeks ago, said he's a general manager, so he wanted to make this a 
non-disqualification match. So then that's when everybody got involved. We saw Braun Strowman. We saw Drew McIntyre. We saw Dolph Ziggler, which happens to give us the reason why we see Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins to come down to help their brother. Nonetheless, in this non in this disqual non-disqualification match, Roman Reigns wins, picks up the spear. Pick, uh, pick wins by the spear over Baron Corbin to pick up the one, two, three. And this just sets up the match again for the Super Showdown where we see the Hounds of Justice taking on the Dogs of War. That's right, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns will take on Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler, and Drew McIntyre at the Super Showdown in Australia. The Dogs of War takes on the Hounds of Justice. Monday Night Raw ended with a Ended in a bang. I must say it wasn't a bad Monday Night Raw coming off a of pay-per-view. It established a lot of things moving forward. Established a Creek Crown Jewel pay-per-view. Established the showdown in Australia pay-per-view. Now I'd like to see WWE focus more on Monday Night Raw than these other pay-per-views that are coming up. I know they need good viewership. But most of us who have the network are going to tune in anyway. So... Nonetheless, WWE, hats off to you. Great Monday Night Raw. Hey, check us out this Thursday night as we talk about a little bit more about Hell in a Cell. Talk about Monday Night Raw, SmackDown. Uh, we also give you our thoughts and opinions on any other rumors that come up between, between now and then on Fox Sports Radio, 1340 AM, 96.9 FM, the Wrestling Marks of Excess, WEME Podcast on Twitter, W. ME podcast on Instagram. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button here on YouTube and never miss any of our shows again. As always, as the wizard would say, if you're not confirmed, consider yourself denied. In the story, ladies and gentlemen, good night.